last week's hunt just simply was not good enough. If you watched the Let's Go Trophy Hunt video last week, you'll recall that we headed out here onto Timbergold Trails as well as Loggers Point in an attempt to find a 200 plus mule deer for the Trophy Lodge, and in the end, that was a failure. Not only that, we failed to add any new trophies to our lodge, and that result was just not enough. So today, we're taking things a little bit more seriously and extending that video, considering this one a continuation of it. So we've got the same loadout, the classic 30-06 rifle, the Red Dragon compound bow, and the crossbow pistol, and we're going to try yet again to add a 200 mule deer to our trophy lodge. Now, when I said we didn't add any trophy to the lodge, one of the things I've been kind of surprised about on Timbergold is the fact that we haven't gotten a Rocky Mountain Elk worthy opening in the lodge. And maybe one reason is we're just looking the wrong way because we almost shot like a maybe 200 instead of what I'm guessing was a 340 or so that we also shot a little bit too far back on. But he'll go down. Maybe if we get lucky, his tracks will lead us to something good. And the good thing is we're barely outside the lodge, so we're not exactly into prime mule deer territory yet. But in the meantime, while we wait for the other one to expire, we actually managed to get another kind of decent bull to come in, definitely smaller than the one that we're tracking, but maybe just big enough to crack 300, and that shot will be a little bit better. So maybe not the best sign that we've started off this video in a very similar fashion to last. The last time, our first two shots at Mule Deer we had the track, everything else we kind of got zeroed in and we're good to go. So I guess this time it only took us one shot, still only a 292, which has been a theme throughout this series. Anytime that we visited Timbergold Trails, the elk just haven't been as big as we'd like. Now for a Roosevelt, if we shot say like a 350, we'd probably put it on the wall. Rocky Mountain Elk are over 350 all the time. I think we need like a 380 or 390 to really consider it, and I don't know that we've even been close. So definitely not the easiest track we've ever had, but at least we found him. Looks like he's kind of decent. That was even intestine and stomach, but 322. Maybe he had some shorter times than I thought. I kind of thought he would score a little bit higher. But even with hitting both the stomach and the test, and he still ran pretty far, wound time was only four minutes, but he covered a lot of ground in that time. That did take us right up close to our mule deer stand, so I guess we'll jump over to that. I think I hear footsteps on top of the grunt that we had. So the nice thing with trapper tents is you can actually crawl up on top of them, and that may be necessary to see whatever's right here by us. Oh boy. Uh, the good thing is the grunt was kind of across the lake from us. If they're not going to pay any attention to that, we'll go to the stand and just avoid spooking anything. Maybe there's stuff around that they would otherwise spook. There are just deer everywhere right now, but I don't see any decent bucks. There's two really small ones. The one that's coming in close here and the one across the way. I'm kind of thinking maybe we do the same thing we did in the last video, though. Take that guy. Drop shot instead of having them run off, and then they don't tend to run across the water because unless they go in the perfect spot, it's actually too deep to cross. So anything over there doesn't tend to get spooked. So if there is a bigger buck somewhere, which I hope, but I certainly don't see one, maybe there's a chance we could actually get to see that. Well, that is a little bit better, and perhaps a result of having dropped that doe in her tracks earlier and not having the whole herd scatter. Now, eventually they did scatter. We're having a tendency to just shoot too low out of a tree stand, but that, weirdly enough, only spooked the doe. So I guess maybe we'll get three bucks from this spot, but I don't know. I guess <laughs> something happens when we record for this series. All the mule deer are just pathetic. I even want to say these two in particular probably aren't going to add to 200. Got a single lung on that, so we're going to be tracking for a little bit. It kind of seems like we should just never hunt from that stand because that continues to happen, but this guy is a 46 score. Those two are definitely not going to add the 200. I think it was probably single lung on both of these, and we have this doe to go and grab. And that, at least, we were able to drop with a double lung shot. Eight meters away, even though we spawned right at that tent, we were all good. And then I think this would have been the location that we shot the bigger of the three bucks. That is body blood, so I guess we're going to have to give that one some time. You know, maybe the real reason we don't have a 200 mule deer in this series is that we're spending more time tracking mule deer that score 85 than we are hunting for a one to score above 200. We gotta go back and follow the other one yet, but hopefully that time spent in tracking this one will at least have the other one bedded down by now to where if we do get closer before it's expired, it's not going to end up fleeing. But all of that 
for three bucks that are well under 200, at least that one was almost a 160. Still a 10 minute wound time for that, and if not for the fact that we had to track the other one, we would have had to just sit there and wait. But we're going to head down towards the kind of center of the map, hopefully get into some mule deer that are a little bit more impressive, and also ones that we can shoot and not have to track for the rest of the hunt. Now that is a little more along the lines of what we're after. I still think he might fall just shy though. Now, he's across the lake here, and what typically happens with bucks in that spot is that they'll kind of roam around, but they'll never actually come in. I don't know why that is, but with the water as a barrier, they just don't come over to where this stands at. So, either we could go over there, or we could try to take him with the 30-06. So, what we'll do, I think, is call enough to make sure any other bucks that might be back there in the brush are going to step out. There's a third one there, so there's probably two more to see. And if none are bigger than that, probably we'll just crack out the 30-06. Actually, buck number four, I think, is going to make it. 195 to 220. I still think we better make sure there's not even a better fifth one or a not typical or a rare or anything like that, but that's got a real chance. And based on the frame, I think he should be probably 210 or so. I think that's the fifth buck. I've kind of lost track of what's what. That's the probably 190 or so. This guy is the one we want to take. So let's get him. I don't think we'll get both of the good ones. If we can just get the better of the two, that will be good enough. Especially with this scope. But the good news is we don't have to track when we use a gun. I mean, man, that had to be close. I don't think we hit him. We should be able to see blood if we did. But let's see what this guy is. He's even got like the nice dark antlers. Now, what I didn't see were a couple different stickers, one there and one right there by the brow tine that may cost us some score. I still think he's got enough room to go above 200, but might not quite be 210. Lung, liver, and stomach at 103 meters. <laughs> 198.9. Those stickers did in fact cost us. Well, the good news is there are a couple of kind of bonuses to this week's recording to last week's. Last week we had the EW stream kind of in the middle of it, so that's why we cut the hunt in half between Loggers and Timbergold. This week there is none of that, so we can spend as much or as little time on Timbergold as we want. But disappointed by the results of last week's video, I decided that for our classic stream, we would come back to Timbergold Trails, and the title of the stream was Will Mule Deer Like Us Better on Stream Than in the Videos? And as it turns out, they absolutely do. Uh, the skins in Classic are much better. Yeah, I mean, the, the guns definitely... Hello. That's a nice buck. That's a 200. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> so that, that's not even the one that we're tracking? There was one up to 130 kilo. I'm pretty sure that was like a 210. That was a good one, too, that just ran through there. I, he may have been uneven, but what is going on? What the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 210. That's fine. <laughs> so, what do we do about this? Does this, should we put this in the lodge? Glad we took the time. Not the best lighting I've ever seen, but we'll take it. All right, we got deer calling. Let's try to figure something out. Uh, Man's a wildlife photographer. It's just, I mean, I, I do it with even non... That's a big buck, too. What is happening? Hold up. He's got a sticker. That's up to 230. I'm not even so sure that's the one we saw run. It could have been. It's about 40 meters out. Look at him seeing us from all the way down there. Should be a long shot. 210? He may have cracked 220. <laughs> that was a good deer, too. What on earth? 101 kilo. 214. You'll notice many, if not all, of my trophy shots are taken from angles like this, like down low. That's why. The brim of the hat basically covers it. So... Even if our 198 had scored something like 210, we could have considered taxing it, but we actually have two bigger than it now, a 214 and a monster 238. And 
I really do feel those bucks belong in the Let's Go Trophy Hunting Lodge. That stream, much like this video here, was meant to be a continuation of the last hunt because we had failed to get a 200 mule deer again. So I'll leave that to you guys in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Should they go in the Let's Go Trophy Hunting Lodge or should they not? But I also mentioned at any time we can switch between loggers and timber gold, and because we now have two 200 plus mule deer, I say we go to loggers, continue hunting for mule deer. We still want a 400 non tip. But also we have the ability to hunt for things like rabbits, pheasants, other things that could maybe go in plaques that we're missing. And we'll see if we can add even more to our trophy lodge. And never a bad thing to start off with a grunt. It is sometimes a bad thing though, when you've got a doe coming in that may end up spooking the buck. So 30 meters out, I think maybe not from a tree stand will be okay. That's not been a problem, is when we're in a stand, we are just not placing these shots correctly, which Again, when it comes to the whole mule deer thing, definitely does not make things any easier. But got both of those deer down without spooking anything else. Who knows what else is around, actually? One thing that is around is another whitetail buck. So we'll start calling for that. Should be able to get both of these claimed and work our way up to that kind of higher point where we can see. This we shot through actually spine one, left lung, and liver. So I think both the combination of lung liver would have dropped it as well as obviously just the spine one shot. The buck on the other hand should have just been double lung. And again, when we're not in a raised position, that's not been a problem. That was 32 meters away, double lung, no problem with the red dragon. And let's kind of hurry up and get up to that point where we can see the other buck coming in. Now, once again, we've got two different deer coming in. I have no idea what's behind us. I just heard the footsteps and the buck in front of us is not very big, so I guess we're going to try to get this. Let's get the 30-06 loaded just in case, because I kind of feel like, yeah, this is going to be a situation where we have to make the shot fast. He's not big, but I guess better that than just spooking everything. And we're really not into necessarily mule deer territory yet. I wanted to do something a little bit different than we did last time we were on loggers, because obviously that didn't work out in getting a really big mule deer. So we spawned up here kind of towards the center of the map, and what I want to do is just work our way down to the southern part, where we should start to see more. That does bring us past kind of like the best cottontail rabbit hunting area, stuff where we may get to use the crossbow pistol. And we'll see where it takes us, but not too bad starting with a couple of bucks. So finally into mule deer territory, and we've got a kind of decent buck here at 155 to 185. And I guess at least it's a relief we're not always looking for a 200. We can get back to, at least to some degree, focusing on hunting for a non-tip. Now, realistically, that is such a small chance of happening. But as I said, I think in the last video, so was getting a 200 typical whitetail for all those years, and it did eventually happen. And it's certainly not going to happen if we don't try. So we might as well be on these mule deer maps and continue to look for it. And by the way, hopefully next time that we come out here for this series, we will go after Roosevelt Elk again. But... Because of the last video and then the events that happened in the stream following it, I felt like it was kind of a necessity to come back here. Ooh. That's got some potential. That's a max estimate cottontail rabbit track. And also important, it is a female rabbit track. You can get male rabbit tracks that are max weight, at least with a lower tracking level. I don't know what level we are. It's clearly above 10 because of all the information we can see. But when you get to a higher level, maybe that can't happen. A max weight male track will never score all that high. It's the females that can score up to the potential max. So hopefully this one will be up there. That should be our rabbit right there. And much like in the last video, we want to keep moving once we spot a rabbit hunker down. Because if you stand still, they'll kind of go back into the calm state and can potentially spook when you take a shot. So like if we miss this and it's still hunkered down, we should be good. And the reason we could miss because I can barely see where it's at. Definitely missed. I don't know where that hit. We're going to scoot a little bit closer. I just can't even see where we're aiming at. I think we're hitting like to the left. I don't know what would be in the way. That definitely got it. I do want to know how far that was because it felt like we should have been able to hit it. That was 25 meters, so probably 30 the first time. 1700 is not a bad scoring rabbit. Is it worth putting in the lodge? We have nothing in those small platforms, so I guess we'll go ahead and mount it with GM. Is it always 
Less than 2,000 for rabbits? I thought everything cost 2,000 GM. And it looks like our hunt here on loggers is going to end with the same thing it started with. A pretty average whitetail buck. So might as well make use of the 30-06, which we'll probably want to load. Hopefully only one round's going to be necessary, because that's all we're going to put in the gun. As long as we can shoot better than we did with the bow at the beginning of this hunt, that's going to be fine. So we can take our mule deer and our rabbit down to the trophy lodge and take a look. And the mule deer, by the way, I haven't put in the lodge yet, so I'm looking forward to finding the perfect spot for them. I don't know where we're going to want to place them yet. We have all of the small plaques filled, but there's a couple of kind of decent at best whitetail bucks and those sort of things in there. So it'll be fun to try to find, you know, the best combination, see what the best thing to remove and all that will be. As for our whitetail, I'm going to guess maybe 120? And then I'm putting him lung and liver, 126 for him. So we've got our new cottontail rabbit just inside the door here. Again, 1700 isn't all that special, but there's still four more of those small round platforms to fill, so might as well get something on them. And between rabbits, I guess ptarmigan on timber gold, that might be the only two species for the maps that we're working with. Hopefully we can eventually get that done. As for the mule deer, it was actually an easy choice. We had, I think, a 171 and 173 whitetail in these slots. So our biggest whitetail from the series is the 177. Pretty easy to leave the non-tip and add the two mule deer. So our 214, which by the way, I didn't notice at the time, he's got a short main beam on his left side. And then obviously the two short back tines and a couple of stickers. He has about a 230 frame. Like frame-wise, if we back up on these two, they're actually very similar. The 238 just has perfect time length and all that to let him score that high. And for him to literally just come trotting right to us, not the buck that we're tracking, right into bow range and allow us to take him out on stream like that was just insane. And I really like what that does for this wall. We could consider maybe swapping the piebald and the 177, just so it's all kind of trophy class antlers on that back wall. A 238 mule deer, a 177 whitetail, a 214 mule deer, a 380s elk and a couple of kind of placeholder elk would be a pretty nice wall. But this is multiplayer. We can't swap stuff from in the lodge. We just do it right now. But pretty cool. I like where we're getting to. And Timbergold has added a lot now to the series. The albino doe, the two big mule deer. I think we have a grizzly bear back here. It's responsible for some of the best stuff in this lodge. And despite the fact that it took forever to get a 200 plus mule deer, it was definitely worth the wait for us to get two and two of that size. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.